So we've already gone through some of the rules of, you know, how you add and subtract. If you have two things added and subtracted together with equal sign, how you would solve for a variable. We've done multiplication division. We've done exponents and radicals, right? And we talked about cross multiplication, where it's just sort of a tool that you can use to help you out uh, in solving equations when you get larger equations and more complicated. One thing we really haven't talked about is what's the big deal about solving equations? Why are we learning this? And this is something that uh, is rarely talked about before you get into this stuff. They usually, you know, in most curriculums that I've seen, they actually, you know, teach you how to solve equations and then they tell you what it is that you're solving for, why you learn this technique, right? It's like adding and subtracting. You know, think about solving equations as you know, the first time you learn how to add and subtract or multiply and divide, right? You had to, you know, you were pretty rusty at it at first and then slowly, once you got it down, it was, you know, just like riding a bicycle. You don't forget how to add, you don't forget how to subtract. You might forget how to multiply and divide, but adding and subtracting, you never forget, right? Solving equations is the same thing. This is uh, sort of the core of uh, mathematics when you're going to analyze functions where you have to solve equations. So solving equations, the reason we're going to learn this technique is, is um, you know, if you can think about every equation as basically a function. For example, we've already talked about simple equations like 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, right? And we solve for this. You bring the 1 over, it becomes negative 1 divided by 2, so x is equal to negative 1 half. But what is it exactly here that you're solving for? This is an unknown, it could be anything. But the way it works is, every equation that you see, when you see zero on this side, think of this as another variable. This is your function that you're forcing for it to be equal to zero. Now some of you guys, who, some of you who haven't gone into functions yet, don't worry about it, we will get into it at some point. But basically functions are uh, an equation you come up with where you say, this thing varies based on this. So this zero here, you can think of as y. Okay. Better yet, better symbol than y is f of x. Because it gives you more information. So for those of you who've gotten to functions where you're using f of x, stop using y. This is way more powerful. Okay. And later on we will talk about this. But for now, while we're solving equations, the way you should think about this is you're solving this equation for when y is equal to zero. So what you're doing is you're forcing this thing to be equal to zero and then solving for when, what x has to be for y to be equal to zero. And in the first series, we talked about x and y, and x and y are just a coordinate system. So this is your Cartesian coordinate system. You have your x-axis here, you have your y-axis here, and your y-axis is really f of x, right? Hopefully you can see this. And your y-axis is f of x, right? So what you're doing here, if your function was y is equal to 2x plus 1, usually you put the y on this side, by the way, but we're doing it this way for now. So y is equal to 2x plus 1, this is a linear equation. A linear equation means a line. For those of you who've gotten into linear equations, you know, one question that I ask, uh, that I've asked a lot of students in the past is, what's a linear equation? A linear equation is a line. Okay. So this graphs a line that, you know, we will get into as well later on. But what this does is uh, you're forcing you're forcing y to be equal to zero. And as we've talked about before in the first series, when y is equal to zero, you're on the x-axis, right? If this is a coordinate system, this is your, if you take a point here, that's your x and your y, right? Well, y is positive here going up, negative here going down, x is negative this way, positive that way. At the pivot here, you're at zero, zero, right? This zero means the y. When you move this way, the y doesn't change. It's still zero. So when you're solving for equations, what you're doing is forcing y to be zero. And you're asking yourself, when is this function, when is this equation equal to zero for what values of x? And what that gives you is where you cross the x-axis for 
your function. Now this is a line, the y-intercept is 1, and your slope is going to be 2 over 1, 1, 2 over 1. Your y-intercept, your x-intercept is going to be here, which is, if we solve this equation for y is equal to 0, right? we're forcing y to be 0, that means we're forcing y to be 0, and we're trying to find out when, you know, what x is when y is equal to 0. And when we solve for this, we're going to get a negative a half. And that's where the x-intercept is. So for all of these questions that we're getting, when they're asking you to solve an equation, what they're asking you to do is solve for the x-intercepts. And there are numerous numerous ways later on in higher level mathematics. Right now all they're going to say is solve for this equation. But there are different terms that mean the same thing. Solving is the same thing as finding the x-intercepts, finding solutions, finding roots when it comes to quadratic or higher, higher degree functions or higher degree equations. Okay, So solve, let's see, do we have enough room here? Solve means x-intercept means finding the roots, means finding the zeros. Okay. All of these things are asking you the same thing. As solving is, you know, getting a solution for something, right? All of these things are asking you the same question. They're asking you to find out when you're crossing the x-axis, no matter how complicated the function gets. This is just a linear linear equation, right? That could give you a quadratic equation. So when you're when they give you a function like this, this represents a quadratic function. The quadratic function is, you know, for this it would be a parabola, okay, because that thing's positive. What you're doing is when they give you a question like this and they say solve for this and in general functions put over here when they when they actually want you to solve for this they'll put the zero over on this side they mean the same thing it doesn't make a difference if you put equal zero here or equal zero here okay so what they would do is say solve this equation and what you're doing is trying to find out what x is when y when the function is equal to zero so when you're crossing the x-axis and that's what we're doing when we're solving equations and the tools that we learned of how to move things around when they're added or subtracted together, multiplied, divide together, or exponents and radicals, those rules that we learned are going to help us, you know, solve equations which are going to be later on when we're going to start talking about functions, they're going to have meaning for us when we're trying to interpret the function. Now, that's why we're learning this stuff. That's why we're about to go into this whole series of solving different types of equations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this stuff really fast, okay, because there's a lot of, a lot of material. When I decided to talk about this, I opened up a gigantic can of worms because, you know, you can start with linear functions, go to quadratic functions and cube functions and higher degree functions. And, you know, every level is just a little bit more complicated. A few more rules get uh, added on for you to be able to solve for the equations because it's not as simple as just getting x by itself on this side, right? Because if you remember your exponents and radicals, you can't add this guy and this guy together. So it's just by, you know, moving things around, you're not going to be able to get x equals the number. This has two solutions or a maximum of two solutions or, yeah, maximum of two solutions. So there is different techniques for solving this equation than there is for a linear function, such as, you know, two x plus one is equal to y, or is equal to zero when you're solving for it, right? So this one is really straightforward. All you do is just move the stuff around and divide, you're done. For this one, you can't do that. You have to factor this equation. And the way we're gonna deal with that is use a property of zero where uh, it tells us the only way that you can get any type of equation equal to zero if things are being multiplied together if, if one of the terms is zero. Okay. But we'll talk about that as well and, and 
in this series or in these batch of videos that's coming up. Okay, and that's the reason why we're solving equations. Uh, it's sort of a precursor for us to be able to deal with functions. Okay, super powerful, super important. One of the basic, one of the first steps we get into when we're analyzing functions, when we're creating models, when we're you know trying to make predictions or trying to understand some kind of system.